We're in Knapdale, which is in Argyll, um, and we're in the middle of the Atlantic rainforest. Knapdale describes the place quite accurately. So Knapdale is an old Norse word. Um, it means basically ridge and dale. So we've got a series of southeast, northwest ridges, and in between those ridges we have both seawater and freshwater lochs. The activity we're doing tonight is a beaver walk. We're set off from our centre and that's where we'll tell you a little bit about why the beavers are here and what they're up to. Um, and we're going to be walking around a lot called Barnlishkin. <laughs> One of the first things we'll see when we start off on the walk is a huge willow tree that was taken down a couple of years ago. Um, the, most of that tree has fallen into the, the log, part of it is still standing and that's got hung up. Um, we'll also see the fact that that tree is regenerating from the base because the species that beavers target regenerate rather than die, so they're coppices effectively, just like we coppice would as well. Beavers are crepuscular, that means they're dawn and dusk animals. So. A beaver's day kind of is the opposite to ours, so they'll, they'll set off to check their territory and to find food from maybe 7, 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, that's when we might have a chance of spotting them. Um, they'll do a few hours and then they'll, they tend to go back for a midnight siesta and then they'll put in a bit of a dawn shift as well. And then for the rest of the, then for the, rest of the daylight hours they'll be asleep. So their territory here is quite big. So we hope to get a chance to see them as, the, as, a, as in effect they are when they're leaving the lodge. The lodge is best seen in winter and we describe it to folk as looking like a large burnt out bonfire. And that's because over the autumn period, the beavers are bringing in lots of mud and new material to make sure the lodge is in good nick, and make sure it's properly insulated and, and that it's safe from predators. Um, during the spring and summer, it slowly turns green because of all the material they bring in is full of seeds. So whether by accident or design, the lodge kind of disappears into the landscape, it becomes camouflaged. The one here is probably two to three metres high in total. Um, huge amount of material there, and inside you'll have two possibly more ch ch dry chambers. They'll have one that is connected to their underwater entrance. The, the entrance to the lodge is always underwater, and that'll be the, the one they come up in they may bring some food in with them, they'll groom and dry off there. And then further inside the lodge, there'll be other chambers that are dry, which is where they will sleep and also where they give birth. Our beaver walks aren't just about beavers. We look at all the amazing lichens and mosses and things that you see in the Atlantic rainforest we have here. We'll look at the bird species that might be on the lock at the time. Um, we talk about how otters and other mammals associate with the beavers. Um, they're all as vital to each other, um, but the beaver tends to be the keystone. The material that falls into the loch becomes a resource. It's cover for fish. It also adds nutrients. It's food for invertebrates, so that, that's one of the spin-off benefits. On land, they are opening up areas in, in woodland next to water, riparian woodland. So you let more light in, you get a different mix of species. Um, particularly of plants initially, that attracts a different range of insects. The piece of the wood that's hung up becomes dead standing timber and I think it's about half of all our invertebrates in some stage of their life cycle depend on dead standing timber. Spin-offs again of course mean that all the things that target those insects like bats and dragonflies and woodpeckers are also attracted to that timber as are all the various different types of fungi and lichen that will exist on dead timber as opposed to life. We hope that people are inspired by what the beavers do. Beavers engineer their environment and they're quite unusual. Um, humans obviously engineer their environments, but beavers do so as well. The difference with beavers most of the time, however, is that lots of other species benefit from that engineering. Um, and that's what we want to show people. We also want to show folk how connected all of these elements are. 